pay softwares are everywhere on YouTube. And it's legit for them to charge you because a company with a huge development team is making software only for you. But you don't always need paid software, do you? Sometimes free software are just as good as the paid ones, if not better. So here are some free alternatives to expensive software that needs more attention. But before we begin, let's check out our sponsor for this video, Crisp. Crisp is a new noise cancellation software for crispy Skype video calls. Hang on, let me give you a demo. This is how you use your Skype call would sound amidst all the noise and chaos. And hang on, this is with Crisp on. The noise just disappears. Crisp uses AI to separate your voice from the noise and it works with many video conferencing and messaging apps. Crisp is available today for both Mac and Windows and you can check it out from the link in the description below. That said, let's check out some best free alternatives for paid software. Well, if you're not into gaming or you're not a YouTuber, you might not have heard of OBS Studio. But hey, you should still know about it. OBS Studio lets you record your screen or stream it over YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. While most free ones limit the screen recording or streaming to 1080-30p, here you can go 4K-60p. Well, if your screen supports that, obviously. On top of that, you can also add overlays, mix your sound and all the features that you get with a pro streaming software. So the next time you want to record your screen or stream it, remember OBS Studio. Another Microsoft product? Well, I would agree that it's legit Microsoft Office is paid because it has its own usability. It's an enterprise level software with lots of tools and features inside it. But mostly, it's an overkill for you and me. You would be better off using the LibreOffice. For the start, the names are quite confusing. Let me put it this way. Libra Writer is MS Word, while Libra Calc is MS Excel. And Libra Impress is what you call MS PowerPoint. The controls presentation and the UI mostly are built around Microsoft Office apps. Most of all, it supports MS Office files, which for me is pretty damn important. Suppose I get a doc or Excel file from someone and I don't have MS Office. Now, how do I work with this file? Well, just double click and open it in LibreOffice. It's as simple as that. This one is quite interesting. If you remember my previous video, I recommended Friends. A popular all-in-one messaging tool that clubs your WhatsApp, messages, Slack, Gmail, everything under one window. Now, everyone at TechWiser has replaced Friends with Station. Here's why. Although Friends is free, but will occasionally nudge you to upgrade by making you wait a few seconds. With time, this gets annoying and I don't want to pay a subscription fee for a web wrapper. So me and everyone here just switched to Station, which is free, supports more apps and has a few extra features like Google Drive support, D&D, etc. Most importantly, it does not make you wait for messages. Overall, Station is way better than France. This list wouldn't have been complete without Brave. I've been using Brave browser on my Android for a long time. And a large number of people don't know that it also has a desktop variant. Built on Chromium, I feel at home using Brave browser since all the controls are similar to that of Google Chrome. And the inbuilt ad blocker makes sure that the website load time is faster. But the best thing is, it has cross-platform browser sync. So the bookmarks get synced right away. The sync is in beta as of now, but works good. Okay, talking about things that suck in Windows, let's open this picture inside Photos. Or how about this movie in Videos? You get my point, right? The native photos and videos app is slow and Irfan U is a good replacement. It's not only lightweight but also loads photos a lot faster than the native photos app. I admit it doesn't have the best looking UI but it can open any file format you throw at it. And the best part is it also supports MP4. Cool right?
I don't have to tell you how bad the Windows Start menu is. Now I know it's not paid, but a cool replacement to that is the Vox launcher. It's not only free, but the awesome thing about it is the modules. It has everything file search, currency converter, calculator, etc. You name it and the module is present in Vox. Now bid it against the start menu. This is how things look like. The start menu is slower, dumber and keeps pushing Windows to. Now talking about videos, good video editing software like Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, lots of Pro. All these software are good. I have been using Premiere Pro quite extensively and here at TechWiser, we use Final Cut Pro for editing these YouTube videos. But the software which is gaining traction right now is DaVinci Resolve. This one from Blackmagic is basically free with a few add-on purchases here and there. But what makes me really reconsider Premiere Pro is have a look. The footage on the left is color graded using Premiere Pro and the one on the right is done using DaVinci Resolve. The only issue is it's hard to understand the interface. It's not suitable for beginners and you would need a relatively powerful system to edit your videos. But it's a great tool if you want to edit your videos professionally and you're ready to invest some time learning the tool. Now GIMP might not be the ideal replacement for Photoshop, but think of this. What's the most used feature of Photoshop? Layers, color correction, color grading, face retouching, annotation, stamping, masking. Well, that's a lot, but you can do all of these in GIMP. My most favorite would be this stamp tool, which I use quite often. And yeah, it's just a layer for color grading and you get all those color correction tools. But here's the main problem. The UI, as you can see, is not great. Plus coming from Photoshop, you might have problems finding the smallest of tools. Like I cannot see the resolution while exporting the photo. I have to go back and change all that in the preferences. But hey, free and open source. Being a YouTuber, most part of my job involves dealing with videos and often I have to send videos for review before they get uploaded to YouTube. Well, obviously sending GBs of file for review doesn't really make sense. So I encode the video using Handbrake which significantly reduces the size. For example, I upload this 1 GB of file to Handbrake and after compression, it is reduced to almost 30 to 40 MB. And the loss in quality is just indistinguishable to the human eye. But why Handbrake? Just do a quick Google search for video encoders. Most of them you will find are paid and free ones don't let you export in 4K. But Handbrake on the other hand has all the latest codecs, I mean H.265 and also lets me outsource in 4K custom frame rates, which is just awesome. The tragedy with these free open source apps is that they work exactly as advertised and sometimes even better than the paid one. But due to lack of marketing budget, you don't hear about them and neither they rank on the SEO. So at the end of the day, it's the job of the creator to share such apps and people who are watching it, share it with your own folks. And let me know in the comments below if a free app that you use is better than a paid one. And on that note, this is Pratik signing off. See you in the next one.